welcome to another Happy Pod, the only podcast in the world. No, your ears are not um, deceiving you. Deceiving you. Yes, thank you, Lawrence. Um, <laughs> I played the full version of the theme because I thought it would be funny, and I was right. Um, welcome to this year's show of a podcast. My name is Nathan, where, as always, each and every week, we introduce Lawrence and he tells us what happens on this show. Hello, Lawrence. Good Listeners, morning. if you're shocked, so am I. Uh, so you're, you're not I alone. I threw myself off, okay? <laughs> I threw myself. I played a different theme. I played the full version. I introduced... Yeah, it's all gone wrong already. It's anyway, still going wrong, Nathan. Welcome to another happy pod. <laughs> Hi, Nathan. Right, tell me to shut up. This is where you normally get it back. Lauren, shut up. Thank you. Uh, but, but tell me thing. to tell you what the show yeah, is yeah, about. Yeah, show, show, whatever. <laughs> okay. Nathan, this is the show where every week we get together to discuss something in the realm of pop culture. It could be a movie, it could be a TV show, it could be a video game, but the main thing is that we do so without any of the toxic discourse that is oh so very prevalent. Nathan, hold on to your butts. Hold it's Jurassic on March. to your butts. It is indeed Jurassic March, and what a march it is to <laughs> be Jurassic in oh boy <laughs> do you need a nap what's happened I think I might I don't know clearly I'm not in podcast in shape today <laughs> what what's funnier is that this is not going to be known to the listeners but like Nathan set up set up this this fucking theme song joke for a good three minutes before <laughs> I had to find it on YouTube. <laughs> he had so long to not be thrown off by this. For anyone who's curious, our theme song is basically just a supposedly copyright-free piece of music that Lawrence found one day. Um, and I say supposedly copyright-free because it doesn't stop the numerous copyright claims I have received on YouTube every time we post an episode with it in. So... Look, they love it. It's fine. They... <laughs> So there we go. Um, but yes, Lawrence, it's Jurassic March. We're here. I was quite um, upset at you, as I often am. Um, <laughs> okay. Because cause I wanted to do the Jurassic World movies, okay? Yeah. Because, spoiler alert, I think it's the more fun trilogy, okay? Is, okay, is, yeah. Which, which I don't think is too... Well, it might be controversial for some people, but, you know, I've, I think it's... An okay saying, but I understand we'll need to do this one first. Um, and I and I wanted to go straight into Jurassic World, but but you know after some reflection, I'm a, I'm happy with Jurassic March. I think we can make Jurassic March an annual thing for the next two years and then completely stop it altogether <laughs> <laughs> um, because we will have run out of movies. Um, or we could just cover other dinosaur movies. Well, we might. Well, that that is true. But then yeah. we might have another Jurassic March movie by that point as well. Jurassic Park movie. Oh. Oh, so there's going to be like six and then one outlier in like a, <laughs> in be, two years' time. Well, yes, maybe potentially. <laughs> but we'll we'll see. Unless we just wait to, to do a whole trilogy again. But we don't yeah. know if they'll get that far. Um, anyway, you say some words now. Okay, I will. <laughs> you have a quick nap while I do this. All, All right. right. Um, no, I don't think that's too controversial to say. I think, like, I haven't seen all the Jurassic Worlds, but, like... Boo. No, but they're, they're the more, like, they're, they're the newer blockbusters, aren't they? They're the more accessible ones. Because two and three of the original trilogy are, like, we'll get to them, but they're not they're not number one. They're not Jurassic Park. Do you have any uh, big childhood memories of this movie? Yeah, of course. Dinosaurs, man. Dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. Who doesn't love dinosaurs? Every autistic kid loves dinosaurs <laughs> all right did you love dinosaurs my mum wouldn't let me love this specific set of dinosaurs when she i was didn't want you to be autistic as well no <laughs> no mum <laughs> you can't be ableist like that mum <laughs> she was like absolutely not let's nip this in the bud right now she no, doesn't know what she's done wrong no special interests for lawrence thank you <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't allowed to love dinosaurs. I was very much on the outside of Why this. was you not allowed to love dinosaurs? Mary's not weirdly Christian, is she? No, but it was... Uh, no, not specifically dinosaurs, but she'd heard that this film got a bit got a bit gruesome at times, which was largely overblown. But for a kid, it could be scary. I could see how kids would be scared by this. This shares something in common with me, this movie, in the fact that it's um, we're both 30 years old. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the first movie that you were alive for the release of and I was not, that we've covered, I think. I was not alive for the release of, technically. It, okay. it would have came out earlier in the year. 
Okay, it would have been it, was, it would have been a summer blockbuster. All right, you're a jammy one. You keep clinging on, <laughs> but it is. It was the same year I was born, so I'll, I'll claim that we're both okay. 1993 babies. Me and Jurassic Park, we have that in common. Nathan, general thoughts time, please. Yes, good. It's dinosaurs, man. Dinosaurs are cool. I love dinosaurs. Um, I love uh, Sam Neill, Laura Dern. I love Jeff Goldblum. I love Santa Claus himself. Um, David or Richard Amber, <laughs> one of them, um, the dead one. I, I, it's a, it's a great mix. I love Sam Jackson smoking a cigarette. Yeah, endlessly, endlessly smoking a cigarette. <laughs> um, what's not to love? It's a good time. Um, I think some people are like, "This is cinema," and I'm like, "It's fine, <laughs> you know, it's good." But like, let's calm down a bit, all right? <laughs> like. But it's it's a good time. I enjoy it quite a lot. It's a very good movie. It's a very well made movie, and it's uh, mm. it's very good. So yeah, it's a it's a good fun time. And there's dinosaurs, so I'm happy. I will say. Oh, you're gonna say this is cinema, aren't you? <laughs> well, this is the thing, right? Because <laughs> because here I was thinking, oh, finally we're gonna be on the right track. Nathan even suggested we do Jurassic March. Yes. I'm like, we're gonna we're gonna finally be locked in for a good time to really chat about it. But I saw your four star letterboxed review. And I noticed four, it was right. missing a star, Nathan. <laughs> four stars is a very adequate and very fucking good. First of all, most movies I put on letterbox are either four or five stars. Okay? Like, that's mm. pretty much my go to rating. <laughs> all right? But you're acting like, for, like somehow I've slandered this movie no. by giving it four no, no, stars. No, no, four stars is completely acceptable. Perfectly good. In fact, a glowing endorsement. Yeah. However, hearing you say that some people call this cinema, Nathan, we may be we may be in for another row podcast. Because oh, this is the second coming of Christ, Nathan. I can be hyperbolic, but this movie is not me being hyperbolic. When I talk about this movie, I am not being hyperbolic. This movie is incredible. I watched it yesterday, not for the first time, for the second time. First time I watched it was like a year or so ago, but I was doing them for Caravan, so I was very much watching to be like, and making a note like, that's a funny shocked face, I'll write that time code down. What's Caravan? It is a YouTube series hosted by Nick Mason and Mr. Sunday Movies, James himself. Um, yeah, go. I mean, don't go check it out, check this out. <laughs> Stay here. <laughs> okay. They've got enough. I was giving you a chance come. to plug yourself. <laughs> it's not me though, is it? It's completely them. No, it's your work. <laughs> Uh, it's mine and Ben's work, and we get paid to do it, but yeah. yeah. Um, but so I, I, that was the first time I watched it, and then I watched it yesterday. I, what I would say, not for the first time, but like first time I sat down and like zeroed in on it. Mm. And I was like, oh man, this bangs. This is, this is great. This is just really good stuff. See, and I I'm, sat down and watched it yesterday, and I was like, oh, it's a bit slow in parts, isn't it? Oh, see, I don't think so. At all. What parts do you think are slow? Uh, every time there's not dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there's that autism you yeah, were saying yeah i was like oh this really drags when there's no dinosaurs on the screen man. but that's when they get into all the ethics it's a lot, of it all it's a lot of oh, fuck the ethics man i just want dinosaurs. it's a lot of people just like stood in rooms and just like well you know we're all so concerned with if we can we didn't stop to consider if we should you know and that was that's my next point without without the ethics you don't get some of jeff goldblum's best line deliveries of all eth- time the ethics are fine but it's a bit like I mean, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I don't think, yeah, like, I don't think anyone who watches this movie would disagree with the ethics of it, really. Like, <laughs> no, but, the, but it's flip floppy, isn't it? Because they go from being like, these are the most beautiful things we've ever seen. And then they sit down in the room. They, the second they can't look at a dinosaur and marvel at its beauty, they sit down and go, this is really bad, actually. <laughs> Hang on a minute. This is wrong. Yeah. That is fine. But. Oh. <laughs> It's no, like, like the scene, the the Jurassic Park scene, you know, where they're in the Jeep and then Richard Attenborough's like, welcome to Jurassic Park. Yeah. It's <laughs> fucking amazing. It's beautiful. There's a Brontosaurus, a Brachiosaurus, I actually believe it is. Um, and he's a beautiful boy. Uh, he's got a big, long neck, and they're walking, they're having their fucking drink in the lake and stuff. The John Williams score swells. The look of sheer fucking shock and awe on mm. Sam Neill and Laura Dern's face as they see those dinosaurs for the first time. It's like, that's us. That's us watching this movie. <laughs> yeah, We're like, is, yeah. fucking hell. I don't know how Spielberg did it, but he brought dinosaurs back to life. But then you have people sat in a room. 
<laughs> and I'm like, but I get it. And you, you have, it's got to be like, there. It can't. They can't blow their load with just dinosaurs endlessly. I just got to. You got to give them a break. You to appreciate them, Nathan. I just want to see. I want to eat my dino nuggies. <laughs> and, 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 watch, and watch dinosaurs, Lawrence. Have you have you heard that analogy of um, like if you have too many biscuits, people's mums used to be like, well, you know, if you worked in a biscuit factory, you'd be sick of biscuits. I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah, look, that's that's what that is. That's what you're describing. Endless dinosaurs will not let you appreciate the dinosaurs when they're back when they're on screen. But I won't know until I have more dinosaurs. I guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. Someone, <laughs> Topher Grace, listening to this, make a cut of just dinosaurs. <laughs> just every time a dinosaur's on screen, trim it down and send great. it to us. That'd be great. I like that scene that you're saying though, because it's like the being the audience surrogate. It's it's very much like a fucking Sam Neill and Laura Dern's acting in that moment. Mm. Like it, it it all hinges on them because like the movie is incredible for its day, but thirty year thirty one years on, you can see. All right. That's not that's not real. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you yeah. kind of got no, but you've you've got to be brought in by their performance, and like you have to believe that these like scientists who have both dedicated their lives to creatures they'll never see in the flesh, like that would be a life changing experience, and they really sell it. Of course, um, yeah, which is really good. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite big old dino in this? Uh, I like a classic T Rex. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Tyrannosaurus scene is a great scene. Like when it when it first appears. Uh, with the cars and stuff, it's a, a great scene. Um, I I love the Brachiosaurus just because it's a it's a big gentle boy. Is that the one that they keep calling the Veggie Saw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just big long neck, just wants to yeah. eat leaves and stuff. Before we speak about dinosaurs, um, the hunter guy and Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, there's enough sexiness between them to make me question a few things about myself. Is what I'll say about this movie. <laughs> okay. Mate, them thighs, he's wearing like his little Boy Scout outfit, the hunter guy. And yeah. he has got like the biggest cyclist thighs you have ever seen. That man walks for a living and you can tell. Who's this, the hunter? Yeah, the one that goes clever girl and then gets gets his head ravaged off. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeff Goldblum with his little open shirt and he's just like flirting with everyone. He's got endless riz for days. Just chatting up anyone he sees. Will you ever stop burdening me with this fucking... <laughs> With your your, it's like you've pulled up a Gen Z dictionary and you just <laughs> seem. Oh, anyway, go on. On God, Nathan, I don't think that's very fair to say. On right? oh God, you yeah, are capping. I think you are capping for real right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, but yeah, all right. What do you want to talk about? Because there is dinosaurs. dinosaurs. We'll get... No, we'll get. I know. <laughs> but we'll get to the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> all right. Can we talk about? Can, we, can, we, can you can you allow me a few moments to talk about the script? Oh, fine. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. Look, Spielberg says he wasn't the only person that wrote on this, but like the, the character Crichton. My, that's the book it's adapted from. Yeah. Jurassic Park. Uh, David Coep. It's probably not how that's pronounced. K O E P P. Coep. Maybe. I did my best, David. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, man, they they set up characters so fucking well. Before we've met a single one of the main trio in this, um, being uh, Ian, Alan, and Ellie, Ellie Sattler, Sam Neill, Maura Dern, yeah. and um, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> okay, we're doing actor names. That's yeah. fine. Um, we we learned that Sam Neill is a digger who will get to the bottom of stuff. We know that Hammond hates inspections. They don't sit you down and tell you who the characters are for ages. It's all just like weaved into this conversation that the lawyer has with this guy. Um, Sam Neill is a man who loves to terrify kids, all right? (laughs) Yes, he loves it. That's what he'll do, all right? (laughs) First of all, why is that kid at a fucking paleontologist dig site or whatever? Yeah, there was apparent. Apparently, there's a theory he's young Chris Pratt, but I don't think he's. That's bullshit. No, he's not. Um, And I also don't think that holds true with. Later movies. Oh, they meet up, don't they? They do meet up. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> he was like, "You traumatized yeah, me as a you young boy." Traumatized me as a kid. You like pulled out a raptor claw on me or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so much so, I was so scared of dinosaurs, I ended up working with them or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. No. Yeah. But yeah, why? Why is like the most annoying kid in the world on this fucking set? Uh, actually, they're not very scary. Actually, I think you'll find that uh, it's just a big turkey or whatever. So, <laughs> you, you get the sense that Sam Neill is like, you want to bet your life? 
Yeah. Look at look at me. I've dedicated <laughs> my life to this. You're but, here because I'm running this shit. But he's also like gather around everyone, watch me own this six year old boy <laughs> right now. <laughs> This 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 is the peak of what a man should do. Exactly. I like that Laura Dern in that instant. Like it's 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 not. I don't even know if it's part of the script, but because it's like in the background and you wouldn't notice it unless you like clocked it and you weren't looking directly at Alan Grant in the scene. But she goes, "Oh no, here we go." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, does he do this a lot, to um, kids? I reckon he does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he get he pretends to electrocute himself later on to scare them. Yeah, he terrifies them. He can't stop himself. Yeah, and then he, then he calls the boy who has just been freshly electrocuted a human piece of toast. That was uh, one of the funniest scenes in the movie when that boy gets electrocuted. Oh, you didn't like him? You wanted to see him suffer? No, not at all. It was just very funny. I thought he was tense. I all that was... little cut in between Ellie, like, it's a good thing to get the power back on, but then I'm suddenly like, don't turn the power back on. They're on the fence. Yeah, but it's funny, so it's fine. I'd... That's true. I think calling a kid a human piece of toast, though, is a bit out of pocket if someone's just been electrocuted. Nah, he's fine with me, man. Like, Jeff Goldblum has a line where, like, Alan Grant says, are you, are you married? And he goes, occasionally. Tells me everything I need to know about him. He's got three kids. He's, he's got three kids, and he's like, I'm always on the lookout for uh, for an ex-Mrs. Malcolm or something. A future, Mrs., a future ex-Mrs. Malcolm or whatever. Unbelievable writing. Like, I know, I know it's such a simple line, but it just tells you everything you need to know about these characters. And it's and it's so consistent. Is that unbelievable writing? I think so. All right, there's I think, plenty I of... think you're like I don't know. I think you're I think you might be falling into the trap. Not falling into the trap, but I think you might be doing what a lot of film bros do. And like <laughs> Stop calling me this! <laughs> I won't. Um, and like like I how to put this nicely. Like I, You're saying I, it's a recency. No, I'm not. I'm saying it's a... <laughs> I guess I am, then. <laughs> it's a bit of a director bias, I think. Because I think, okay. like, if anyone else had wrote that line, you wouldn't be like, oh, it's so I remember, because it's Spielberg. <laughs> then I think people are automatically more willing to blow smoke up his ass. But I'm like... But but that line, is it really that well written or is it just the guy saying, hey, I'm a bit of a sleaze? And also, it's like three quarters of the way into the movie, you know? Like, the setup for this character is done, you know? We, we know everything we need to by this point, all right? So, like, I don't think it's some great, like, oh, Spielberg's a master of dialogue moment. Like, Spielberg's yeah. great, all right? I'm mm. not disparaging that. I just think that, you know... I saw calm down a minute here. <laughs> yeah. I, I I get what you're saying, and it's not if it was that one line, I'd take it I'd take your point. But like in a bubble, yes. But like the rest of the script is just filled with little moments like that. And like it like little not even just character setup lines, but like just great lines. And I don't have I don't have a director bias for Spielberg, right? I, like I don't think he's got a stellar record by any stretch. Right? I, I ready player one genuine dog shit <laughs> like genuine shit on a shoe it is um, yeah it is quite bad we did it for this podcast but we lost the episode oh that 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 hurts even more one some of the two the two episodes that we've lost that like genuinely i feel like could have been amazing um well actually no th three and there's plenty more as well but the last of us which was my mistake then the holiday special which we like we watched the whole star wars holiday special yeah and then we just lost any proof of that and we were like well great yeah. <laughs> fantastic and then that as well another thing we had to just force ourselves mm. to get to the end of and then never reaped any benefit from yeah it's a sad time all um, your fault no I, d I don't know if all of them i'll take a few of them i can't remember who ready player one was i think that was you i don't think it was well i don't think it was me so i guess we'll never know <laughs> okay <laughs> let's let's just draw a line in there <laughs> move on um no i i do i do see what you're saying because there are like Spielberg has obviously got this like legend status that he's revered by. Yes. Right. And he's good. He's made some great movies. He's made some he's made some fucking amazing movies. But yeah. I also think of it like like his movies are great. I don't I really don't want to make it seem like I'm not saying that because they are. They are fucking phenomenal. And yeah. genuinely some of my favorite movies when I was a kid. I fucking loved uh Spielberg movies. Fucking E. T. is an all timer for me. Um, mm. Jaws, fucking phenomenal, man. Um, oh, I want to watch Jaws again. So man. good. Um, yeah. But like, they're they're blockbusters. They're summer <laughs> blockbusters, and people like seem to think of Spielberg as this, you know, 
auto indie little filmmaker Mino making his I don't think anyone thinks he's an indie filmmaker anymore well, no, right. maybe not indie but this auto filmmaker with his little passion yeah. project that you know that <laughs> the, the the studios are against and everything like that but yeah he, no he kind of always has been the the big budget blockbuster guy and he, well, and he does them great they're phenomenal fucking um, he pretty much invented the summer blockbuster. Mate, people said Jaws is the first blockbuster. It there is, are like, yeah. There's a genuine merit, like there's a genuine argument to be made that it introduced the concept of a blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, no, I, I do I do get what you're saying. I do think he makes, every now and again, he'll come out of the woodwork with like, a, have you seen Have you seen The Fablemans? I know we've no. spoken about it. I like, don't think we have. No, as in I've, we've brought it up, but I don't know if you ever watched it. I've never seen it. It's like those those kind of things. They're not small movies by any stretch, but they're the movies that like studios go. We don't mind losing a bit of money for this one, like because Spielberg has like that long term kind of pullback. People will always go and check out something he's done years and years ago. Of course. Um. But so I yeah. But he pretty much he is the king of blockbusters, and I think this is his like prime era. Like he he is he's on god mode in in the nineties. <laughs> on god. <laughs> on god, he's capping for real, Nathan. On god, he is capping for real. <laughs> We um will we talk on trailers? We'll be talking about Spielberg quite a bit this this year. Will we? What else? Oh fuck, we will. Yeah. Spoiling? Are we not spoiling? We've sold people before. We've right? said it before, but yeah. no, little sizzle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're doing seven weeks of Ready Player One. <laughs> we absolutely are not. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a two hour podcast on each scene of Ready Player One. No. There's there's some fucking amazing stuff in this. Um, where do you land on the science? Do you believe it enough? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. It's that right amount of bollocks, isn't it? It's the right amount of bollocks. There's there's a fucking uh, a a little a little bug a little bug a little what's it called a little mosquito mm. is it's preserved in amber. It's got the blood of a dinosaur in it. Was this kind of mosquito still around in the Jurassic era? I don't know. Probably don't worry not. about it. Don't worry about it, you know? <laughs> but who cares? And, and then like, even fucking, you know, B.D. Wong, he's like, yeah, look, we, we filled the rest in with frogs or whatever. So, like, yeah. they're, like they're, they're not 100% accurate. And, like, and since this movie came out in the 31 years that, you know, since this movie has come out, we've learned a lot more about dinosaurs. And we know that, <laughs> or maybe yeah. they actually didn't look like this, you know? Maybe they... You know, even, well, fucking hell, even fucking Alan Grant's like, oh, no, they're all birds or whatever. And, like, mm. we now know that that's, that's more closer to fact, that they are a lot more bird-like than 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 reptile-like. The image we have of dinosaurs, um, and we haven't known about dinosaurs for that long. It was only in, like, the fucking late 1800s that we, we first discovered, um, you know, the first fossils and that sort of stuff um, well, well that's a big dog head <laughs> yeah i don't know what this is who's yeah. got this big dog <laughs> where's, where's this big dog everyone um <laughs> two two men who know plenty about the science by the way <laughs> yeah. but no but um the the reason like we have the image of like what the classic image of what dinosaurs look like is because like all the timey scientists saw the like the bones and like reconstructed them or whatever and went so what would this look like and then just basically put a layer of skin over it but like that's not mm. how you know bodies work like if you put like <laughs> if you drew a rabbit if you drew what a rabbit would look like the same way you drew what a dinosaur would look like you know from just the bones and like then adding the the skin over it it's like a horrible nightmare creature yeah it's like this weird <laughs> fucking like you know really small but like snake like fucking horrible looking nightmare of a beast you know we're actually you no know, there's <laughs> there's quite a lot of fat and muscle and and feathers yeah. to take into account but they're just like no little scaly little boys and stuff um so so yeah like our, our whole perception of like dinosaurs could be way off which which i find fascinating you know and the idea that like a t-rex the most feared dinosaur in all of the kingdom the king of the fucking of uh the the dinosaur era it could basically just be a big fucking pigeon just a big fat <laughs> pigeon is is very funny to me it's, it's true right like yeah. i love the i love the idea of a scientist way back when creating mm. the first like sketch of what he presumes these things would look like in detail mm. uh, and, it, and it just they they go like that's the bare bones shall we add any yeah. more to this no, that'll do. No, that'll do mate. <laughs> we can't, we just can't. And what's more fascinating is the fact that 
we we won't ever know really like how could we well you say that. we we've got we've learned a lot more yeah, you know true. technology advances we're able to decipher more stuff and stuff we'll never get a full 100 percent accurate picture of them mm. no not until time travel's invented any day now any day now I wasn't quite ready for how clued in you are. <laughs> I like dinosaurs, man. I told you, all right? <laughs> what was the most impressive dinosaur in this for you? The T-Rex. It's unbelievably that good, right? amazing. Yeah, S- like... Still, which when, is wild. When it shows up and, you know, it's in the dark and it's raining and there's a storm and stuff, so they, they like, use that to their advantage, really. Mm. But, like, it's... It's a dinosaur, man. It's a fucking yeah. real life dinosaur. It's <laughs> phenomenal how good it looks. I, I think this is one of the reasons Spielberg is blockbuster king, right? Because like mm. a lot of the time, that that's that's like an age old thing, you know. If you if your CGI is a bit wobbly, then you you know you throw it in a storm, put some rain over it, dim mm. the lights a little bit. Yeah. Like suddenly, incredible, right? It looks so much better. You hide all the flaws, but then like mm. Spielberg knows you're gonna get that trade off. He knows yeah. that like you still need to showcase it. So he puts in extra work, like the pupil dilation with the torch in the eye. And it's yeah. like, just those tiny little moments go so far uh, in terms of an audience being like, holy shit, this is real. Like, yeah. my, my uh, edge of my seat stuff when the T-Rex is like chasing the Jeep and that. And even though some of it has now like aged out and looks a bit like the, the stuff that isn't the practical stuff, the CG has obviously got a bit hokier with age and yeah. us just knowing what can be done on screen now like you watch a planet of the apes movie and then you watch this there's a clear winner um but like it's still he's he still spielberg's already put in the legwork for you to believe it so when it becomes apparent that it's not real you don't care by that point because yeah. you're still invested into it yeah at no point i'm like well that's not real that doesn't look yeah. good Pfft, terrible because yeah, you've got jeff goldblum being like ah <laughs> in the yeah. back of a jeep must go faster must go faster <laughs> yeah yeah. And then that, that guy, he's like sitting on the handbrake and the guy's like, bloody move. <laughs> it was very good stuff. It is good stuff, yeah. But yeah, that fucking, that T-Rex puppet, it, it just looks phenomenal, man. The way it like, it like comes down on the car and then like the kids, oh. they're like pressed against like the, the little plexiglass against it as it's trying to like fucking get them. It's it's so good. It's, yeah. it's phenomenal. It looks amazing. Blew my mind as a kid watching it. Blows my mind as a 31-year-old. A uh, yeah. 30-year-old. I don't even know how old I am. Uh, <laughs> You're as old as Jurassic Park is, Nathan. <laughs> no, I'm slightly younger. Okay, <laughs> okay fine. Fun. I'll allow it for now. Thank you. Um, no, but you, it, it, even those moments, like they never lose sight of the um, like the human and the, the, the slight humor of it all. Like, Boring you get... dinosaurs. No, I know. <laughs> It all works in tandem, Nathan. Boring, right? No, because you've got you've got like Alan Grant being like they they their vision is based on movement, mm-hmm. stay still, and then like yeah. he's watching the other car with the kids in it flash the torch, yeah. and he's like he's like stay still, stay still, and then it's just a hard cut to the kids just moving ridiculously, <laughs> and you get annoyed watching them. You're like so you, you do. Know, you gotta stay still. Why are you not experts in dinosaurs? Why are you but the kids, the young like boy is. <laughs> He is, to be fair. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> should be, know better. <laughs> to be fair, I don't think I don't think he'd know to stay perfectly still. He's still a very yeah. scared little boy. You know? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but but yeah, it is. Uh, it, yeah, you touched on it briefly there. The kids, uh, a larger subplot of the movie than I thought is reluctant father Alan Grant. It is quite a big subplot, isn't it? Mm. Ellie's like, "Hey, you you hate kids, don't you?" And he's like, "Yeah." I do. <laughs> I reckon I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like him. I don't want him. I don't want yeah. him anywhere near me ever. All right. But then by the end, they're having naps on him and all sorts. They're He's having loving naps. It. He's giving them a little hug. You know. <laughs> Their actual grandfather, fast asleep at the wheel, doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Mentally clocked out. <laughs> Santa Claus. All right. Yeah, it's true. You can't say a bad word against David or Richard Amber. It's true. It's Richard, by the way. Uh, I know you know this. I'm sure you do know this. I I kinda know this, but I David's the one that does the documentaries. Alright. And this is Richard, (laughs) who's dead. Are they brothers? They're brothers, yeah. Are they actual brothers? They're actual brothers. I didn't know if this was just a joke that people said. I'm almost certain they're brothers. Look at them. (laughs) I've gotta find out. Look at them. No, but you can't say look at them because they're both just old men. (laughs) (laughs) No, come on. They look identical. I don't know if they they're, do. They're old, white-haired British men, all right? 
Uh, Richard Attenborough siblings. All right, fair, fair enough. I'll, I'll so hand I it to you. I fucking told you. All right. <laughs> Fucking told you. Being old and having white hair doesn't give you a resemblance. <laughs> okay. No, they are brothers. I always knew that. Um, what was I going <laughs> to say? You just didn't well? know which one was which. I uh, no, I I just get them confused. All right. Oh, they're like they're like our modern day equivalent is like the Scars Guards. There's like twenty of them running around. Uh, but yeah, Richard Ambra, he's Santa Claus. He's um, I love him in in um, one of my favorite Christmas movies is Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Um, so like every time I see him, I'm like, oh, it's Santa Claus. Yes, I love this. I'm ready. Does does that magic carry over and that fondness carry over into this? Uh, a little bit. Uh, it gets a little bit lost because sometimes he's Scottish and sometimes he isn't. You know? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, when I was first growing up in Scotland, I'm like, where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah. He was. He's, the accent wobbles, <laughs> you know, from scene to scene. But whatever, yeah. you know. Um. Yeah, he's like, forgot where he's from. I like I like Hammond. It's, it's it's this kind of like fucking this Walt Disney esque role, you know, this kind mm. of this guy who has a dream and he just wants to make the the best theme park in the world for people and and that kind of stuff. And you know, he's 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 not a bad guy or anything. He's just he just gets a little a lost in the source of his own yeah. his own design, really. His heart's in the right place, but he can be very frustrating to watch at times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's like people are like getting shredded near him and he's like it would cost loads of money to turn the park back uh, off and on again and I'm like bro stop the park's yeah. done <laughs> you need to let it go at this point but there's dinosaurs to see Lawrence I know and then he's like like do that thing I, it, it's not very humane but that thing that can kill them all do that. <laughs> that that's what you need to be doing I don't know he don't you do when there's like this, your grandkids are running around, like yeah, they, but the, his grandkids could have died like five times in this. But the Brachiosaurus haven't done anything. I, I, look, there'll be some casualties, all right. They're just being peaceful little boys eating their leaves, <laughs> all right. I didn't bring to... I didn't bring him into this world. I don't carry the burden. That should be Hammond's burden, not no, mine. No, I <laughs> look. Hammond only plays God in one respect, and that's giving life to these creatures. <laughs> all right. But okay. He, he can't play God and kill them all. All right. All right. Fine. I do. I do love that like little debate with the um the 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 infamous Jeff Goblin. Oh, you didn't think about whether you uh could. Yeah. Um, well done. And you. Thank you. Uh, that no, he has a line that's great about like the thing. Like he, he's been brought in as the rock star scientist. Like his his ideas are too hip and modern and fresh. Mm. And then like immediately he sits down and he's like, "You don't respect God." All right, you didn't. <laughs> it's like whoa. It's almost like I didn't expect this scientist to be serious when it comes to like nature and everything else. Yeah. Um, but he's got a brilliant line about like the power you have. You there was no discipline required to obtain it. Therefore, you don't respect it. And I'm like, God, that this is the stuff I'm talking about. Those are the little nuggets. I'm like, God, this is well written. Not me. I'm like, snoring. I'm ready to see more dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm like, boo! Bring back the dinosaurs, boo! <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Look, the best part of the movie. I'm not. I'm not telling exactly. you you're wrong. It's what the people want to see, man. <laughs> um, the what do you make of Nedry? Big, <laughs> big antagonist? Question mark Nedry? Uh, well, yes. I don't think there's any debate in that. I, he, yeah, I, he's obviously the, the bad guy. Yes, he did, like, you know, purposefully set up the downfall of the park where kids were present, you know, and then, <laughs> and then set all the dinosaurs loose and everything, so... Yeah, but like, then he made, no, he made no money. He was it, being exploited by the man. Yeah, I know, and I get <laughs> that. <laughs> but then they're also like, God, you're so fat. Nedra, you're so fat. Where is he? Check the vending machine. I bet he's, been, I bet he's down there being fat. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. it's a bit it's a bit offensive. Like he's treated as this very like, like like his workstation is like this is it's, obviously how yeah. a fat guy works, like yeah. a slob. Have you seen any good <laughs> fat guy's workstation? It's it's covered in like <laughs> Cheeto packets, and, like Mountain <laughs> Dew bottles, and everything like this. Of course, of course, that's 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 how every fat guy is in the office. We all know Look, this. It just makes sense. All he's right, always yeah. wearing a big Hawaiian shirt, which I quite enjoy, to be honest. That's apparently a Goonies thing. 
that's like a reference to some someone. I haven't seen the Goonies, but someone wears a you Hawaiian seen the Goonies? shirt. Never seen the Goonies. May you are missing out. A, a young uh, Kihi Kwan, very good. Uh, oh yes, and uh, a young um, Sam Stand by Me Kid. Uh, yes, yes. Corey Feldman. Uh, no, not Corey Feldman. Um, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Is it not? Isn't Corey Feldman the guy that goes do the truffle shuffle? Wait. I've got to find out. This is the third look up of the day. Well, maybe it is. Yeah. Uh, there's a Sean Astin. There's a Josh Brolin. There's a Corey Feldman. There's a there Jeff is Cohen. There's a Josh Brolin, yes. There's the a Kihi Kwan. Brolin. There's a Kerry Green. That seems to be the main hitters. Yeah. No Will Wheaton. So it was the... Yeah, we confused our Stand By Me kids. Oh, no. I reckon it was probably um, John Malkovich in that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Little callback joke. <laughs> Little callback for the two people who will get that. <laughs> it's not my fault they didn't listen. <laughs> We're out here just broadcasting. That's on them. They've got to do the, the research. Great. Um, no, right. But Nedry, okay. I I think it's good that there's this very, like... It's it's interesting, right? Because he's, he's this uh, character uh, that, like... Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. What a frustrating uh, uh, uh. sound. <laughs> I love... I love fucking... <laughs> 90s computer interfaces and like mm. and what what hacking is perceived to be and yeah and, you know it's this little is this little like jpeg of nedry with a little ah, 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 you can't he access took the time this. to make that at home. He, like took the time to animate and like design <laughs> that you know which is very funny to me um <laughs> yeah i don't know. and the fucking the the computer systems and it's like Hey, you want a file? All right, well, <laughs> fly through this room. <laughs> go through a three D maze. Yeah, go through a three D maze and pick a box. You Your know? file's behind there. <laughs> Just guess. It's like some weird version of Deal or No Deal for some fucking. Reason. <laughs> <It is laughs> it's like a CD ROM game version of Deal or No Deal. Yeah. There's just a corner of uh, what's his face? What's he called? Um, Mr. DNA or whatever. No, what, what's he called? The guy. Um, what, the deal on the deal guy? Yeah. Noel Edmonds? Noel Edmonds, that's it. There's just a PNG yeah. of him off to the left or something. <laughs> Stephen Mulhern now. Oh, that doesn't yeah. have the same source. It doesn't. Yeah. He does not have the source at all. And fucking deal on no deal. When I used to watch it as a kid, it used to be the top prize, £250,000. Now it's £100,000. Oh, times are tough. Yeah, no, 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 cost of living crisis. <laughs> I might ring him up and be like, listen, dealer. All right. Is it the dealer or the banker? How does it work? The banker, yeah, it's the banker. I'll tell him he needs to cut a deal with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Stephen, there's a place for Stephen Mulhern, but it's not deal or no deal. He hasn't got the gravitas. It's it. hell. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> I don't like him. He does, mate. <laughs> oh, really? You're not a fan? Yeah, no, not a fan of him at all. No. I think Bradley Walsh is, is, is the goat. Right now on the chase, well, he's can't say I'm a big he's... chase watcher, but he's he's he always keeps his composure, and when he loses it, it's funny. He's he's been doing the chase for years now, with yeah. Bradley Walsh, and yeah, I thought Doctor Who would have slowed him down, but he was right back on it. <laughs> he didn't miss an episode. He was, no. he's still there every day, you know, <laughs> ready to do the chase. Yeah, he is. Anyway, look, Nedry, right? I bring him up because there's uh, this. Uh, oh. no, stop it. <laughs> There's this exchange a bit earlier in the film, which is like... Oh, God, the one this... with the pedophile or whatever. Oh, no, no, no. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get to him. All right. <laughs> um, there, no, there's a line uh, between uh, Jeff Goldblum and Laura Dern uh, that's like, God destroys dinosaurs. God, uh, No. God, dis God destroys dinosaurs. God creates God, man. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys God dinosaurs. Yeah. Man inherit the earth. Well, man, no, there's a, there's a few man, in between there. Man creates dinosaurs. Mm. Dinosaurs destroy man. Woman inherits the earth. Yeah. And kills everyone. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember how it goes. Until they have like their frog DNA come out. Or, yeah. And then, they're, then they're men again or something. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's a great exchange, but I like that it's like there is this kind of metaphor for Nedry. Because like, Nedry is the villain of the piece. He's the antagonist. He sets off all the security problems and all of this, right? Mm. But all of those problems are man-made. He causes those problems. The dinosaurs are contained until Nedry fucks about. 
and then Nedry fucks about, and then there's the scene where Nedry is on his way to go and do his little his little drop off and get his money um, at the dock bit, and a dinosaur just poisons him, kills him mercilessly, and then the dinosaurs are the antagonists for the rest of the movie, and it's like, yeah, that's how this goes. A man does something because he thinks he's clever. <laughs> a dinosaur goes, well, you've now given power back to us we're going to kill you and take that power and now we're the threat like that's just the circle of life that's nature god (laughs) creates dinosaurs god destroys dinosaurs god creates man man destroys god man creates dinosaurs dinosaurs eat man woman inherits the earth great quote yeah i also didn't listen to like the last 30 seconds of what you said because i was finding that but i'm sure it was a great point it do you know what it was and i'm not going to repeat it right that's going to be exclusive for you i I wouldn't ask you to (laughs) that's fine um no it's it's great i like his i like his inclusion um he's definitely the bad guy but he's definitely not treated fairly i can see his motivations for why he went bad guy yeah um but yeah what else is going on in this dinosaurs oh there's a fun moment um i watched this with subtitles very briefly uh because my wife was doing the hoovering um oh. she just needed to hoover something up quickly so that's I how it on... is in your house isn't it i no i'm Jeez. not having this i do most of the hoovering and the housework i'm not having this at all sell down do your hoovering while the man watches a movie <laughs> i'm kicking my feet up get a hoover on will you i've had a hard day editing my little videos all right <laughs> I know you've just gone from work, but get the Hoover on. <laughs> and there's a beer in the fridge. Fetch me one. Exactly. He said it no. himself. No, it's not true. But no, so I had the subtitles on very, very briefly. Um, and you know the bit where they give the um, one of the dinosaurs a cow? They deliver him a cow to, yeah. to eat? Yeah. It just, I had the, that was when I had the subtitles on. And the subtitles came up as moos in fear. And I was, I've never <laughs> laughed harder. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite funny. Moves it's very fear. fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going back to Nedry's desk a little bit. Uh, is no uh, one going to uh. think it's strange? It's like, oh, no. I've, <laughs> I've prompted a motif. Um, is no one going to think it's strange that there's this big barbershop pole garish coloured shaving foam container on Nedry's desk? But then I saw Nedry's desk and like... Yeah. You could genuinely put a dead rat on it and it wouldn't feel out of place. <laughs> it wouldn't, no. But also, it's just a kind of shaving cream. Like, yeah. I know to us it looks like a barber pole because we haven't seen that shaving cream before. But like to <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, that's just, it's like just if there was a, a can of Gillette on there or something. You know? I would still find it weird if someone had shaving cream in the office. Like, you, you need to shave that bad. You bring yeah, it but just... this, is, this is Jurassic Park, though. Oh, this is, you're there, not just yeah. taking a bus down to Jurassic Park, <laughs> are you? No, this is in like fucking Costa Rica or some shit. So like, yeah, you, you're there living there. All right, fine. They're, oh god, this is, then he's really getting underpaid if it's a live-in position as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Fucking turn off more features, I say. <laughs> Go on, Nedry. Do you want to talk about the pedophile? I, I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, we don't have to. No, I I wrote it down because I, I I'll tell you my thought process, right? Because the right. guy that plays. Do you want to explain in, the pedophile? Yeah, well, I'll get I'll get to the I'll get to the pedophile. All right. Um. So, the pedophile is playing a character called Dodson, who is this. He's kind of this incognito business guy. Yes. Right? Who's, who he gives he gives Nedry the shaving foam and then promptly disappears from the rest of the movie. Yes. Um. But he's quite important because he represents like another faction. It's funny because the way he like speaks in, uh, the, sorry, the way he like sneaks in, and the mm. way he speaks, and he's like he's got like sunglasses set up and a hat. He looks like a, um, you know, something you can change into on Hitman to like blend oh, in. Yes, yes. <laughs> he has like one of them type of outfits on, um, and I and I started to write the note. Oh, this guy, this guy looks like a Hitman guy, and then it was that exact moment I went, oh, this guy is a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This guy sucks. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then I looked it up, and that guy is—he uh, went to jail for six years for um, various uh, assaults of minors. Not great stuff. Oh, great! Did he actually assault minors? Uh, some counts were dropped on him, but like some weren't, which probably means the others were just dropped, but not untrue. 
Yeah, not great stuff from him. Uh, he's been recast. Uh, Richard Richard Parker from the Tasm movies now plays him or something. That's true. Yeah, he's in the he's in the Jurassic World Dominion. He's does he come, like a, does he come to have a big part? He's, yeah, he's the he's like the main villain of that movie. He's oh, he's kind of he's like a Tim Apple kind of guy in that movie though. He's got like, a Tim Apple look about him, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, he does a bit. Yeah, got that kind of flat hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I don't We're like excited that. to talk about some great products that we'll be launching today. I don't like this name and stuff. <laughs> it's good. Um, all right. Uh, the oh, back to the ethical stuff. Right. Oh, I've entertained your dinosaur. I want my dinosaur talk. I don't think I've had enough dino talk. No, I'll, I'll free up the floor in a second. All right. All right. Uh, no, I just think it's a good. There, there's great little discussions about like 65 million years apart in yes. like humans and dinosaurs. Two species and then, like, that were never meant to interact. Yeah, uh, but then they're just thrown together, and Hammond's like. It'll be fine. And Jeff Goldblum's <laughs> like, are you an idiot? <laughs> Why would it be fine? I think it would be fine. <laughs> it's not It's not fine in this. Oh, uh, no. But, like, but this is Nedry's fault. Yeah. All right. So you're telling me I that this entire in a, park can crumble from one man. But in a controlled env environment with, yeah. you know, not technology from the 90s where... <laughs> it could all be brought down with a little, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know. Well, then I raise you a Jurassic World. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure this happens with that modern time as well. Look, all right. <laughs> but the thing with Jurassic World was corporate greed, all right? And look, okay. that's the more realistic version of what would happen, all right? <laughs> that, that absolutely would happen, okay? Yeah. But I don't know. My, my favorite part of Jurassic World is like, because by then it's like a fully fledged, you know, theme park up and running and stuff. It's your, it's your Disney World, like fucking resort, paradise, whatever. But there's there's like a little bit in that movie where you see there's like a there's a little there's an area like a kids pet play area, but it's just like little versions of dinosaurs that you can like <laughs> ride on and stuff. Just oh like a little mini Stegosaurus, a little mini Brachiosaurus, and like. <laughs> Little kids are just riding on them and stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> this this should be what the whole park is, all right? Yeah. <laughs> this is enough, okay? We don't need the big fucking, you know, fucking Verizon sponsored Xenomorph fucking dinosaur 350 <laughs> with fucking teeth that can rip you apart as soon as it sees you and everything. Just just a yeah. little play area with some little dinosaurs. Let me sit in there, <laughs> all right? And then and, and enjoy my day. That's more than enough. You know? I I agree, and I love the concept. That there's like, there like there's like B D Wong and his scientists around him, right? Mm. And and they're like, let's create something that will have that would have the power to crush this building and us. <laughs> like, yes. Stop. Stop yeah. now. Someone or like at least you. I don't know modern science. This, this all the science is nonsense anyway. Inject them with this passive gene or something. Like, it also seems kind of stupid that they're like. Um, Oh, we we bred them all to be female, so there's no way that they'll ever <laughs> they'll never breed, you know, on their own because they're all female, and that will never happen. Oh, by the way, we also filled in the rest of the DNA with frogs, yeah. um, and we don't know anything about frogs, so <laughs> so I reckon that'll be fine. And then Alan Grant is like, well, actually, I know frogs, and uh, some of them yeah. can change sex, so fuck you, actually. That that's one of my favorite things about this, right? Mm. It's it's such mm. a proud little thing, even like. Hammond is like he puts them on like this little this little ride that explains the science and yeah side point this is how you do exposition just have Hammond talk to his himself and his own recording and yeah. they like there's a moment where is they he... walk together on their walking sticks is he gonna be so... there for every fucking <laughs> for every <laughs> version of this ride like... he's locked in he's got a concept <laughs> he does yeah um <laughs> But I, I I like that as well because there's some there's some funny bits where it's like it's all about cloning, but then there's just like cold dead eyed Hammond in the background staring <laughs> into the middle distance like I've no idea what I'm doing. I'd like to see that fucking two months into operation when Hammond's got sick of it and he's just some like teenager in a polo shirt, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, yeah, hi John. <laughs> you know you know in um. Spider-Man Homecoming, when the teacher's like, when Captain America's like, your coach right here. <laughs> yeah. And he's on the wrong side of the TV and he's like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure this dude's a war criminal now. Yeah. But, you know. Same thing with Hammond. He would also be a war yeah, criminal. Yeah, he probably would be. Yeah. Um, but no, it, like he, he's, he straps them all in and he's like, 
Mm. Look at my amazing science. And it's like the whole purpose of the, the setup of the movie is that like three experts have been brought in to mm. basically convince the lawyer who represents the shareholders that this is fine. Yeah. And there's like an accuracy that's being upheld. There's security measures that make it safer, like as a secured investment. Um, what a and like, weasel this lawyer is the entire oh, time. So glad when he died. Yeah. Just the worst. He's like, oh, we can, we can, you know, sell tickets for 10,000 a go and everything. Yeah. It can be great. And he's, he's just always thinking about the money. I'm glad he's dead. Yeah. I'm glad he's dead too. And he, that horrible line is like, when he's, when Hammond's like, we should have a, we like, Everyone should be able to enjoy this gift that I've given the world. And he's like, yeah. we'll have a coupon day. And it's like, you're no. you're lucky to be in here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like Hammond, but he'll decide. Thank you yeah. very much. Every day's coupon day. Um, I would be but, interested to see what the operating costs of this place are, though. Quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'd probably oh, yeah. need to offset it, wouldn't you? Oh, there's, a, there's a Jurassic World... Um, it's Jurassic World? Yeah, it's a Jurassic World game, which I enjoy playing. It's kind of like... It's kind of like City Skylines, but with Jurassic Park. You know, like where you just like mm. make your own like city and stuff. With this, you just like make your own park and like operate it and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, like a like that sort of thing. You and build I up your out... your community and yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And I always run out of money in like fucking two days. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so. you know, I gotta wait for my crops to, <laughs> to harvest so I can get more money or something. I gotta wait for the fucking audience to come through and look at my dinosaurs. And then they're like, your 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 attendees are upset. Build more roads. I'm like, they don't need roads. There's dinosaurs. Just look <laughs> at the dinosaurs. All right. <laughs> was like in the early stages of you playing this game. Was it like I have one dinosaur and you're like, pay a tenner now. <laughs> Pretty much, I need yeah. two dinosaurs, <laughs> and then I can charge you twenty quid. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um. But all right. Uh, this is the this was the end of stop motion. This w- wiped out a, 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 an industry. This movie did it essentially. It's still around. It. Oh, it's, yes. I, I raise you, Ardman. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Give me another. Uh, whoever, <laughs> you can't. Whoever, whoever did um, that one that came out like eight years ago. <laughs> what was it called? I don't know, Nathan. That's my point. No, there was one that came out, like one in Oscar. Like something about a boy. I can't remember. Something about a boy. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I, I wish I knew. <laughs> but I, know. I, you know, you know about the behind the scenes of all this and how the CG of it came to be. I mean, I do, but let's say I don't for the audience. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, ba- basically, like. Um, that this Phil was all... Tippett? Yes, he he was plotted out to basically do all the stop motion, hired yeah. a team of people, and was like, this is how it looks. And yeah. Spielberg was like, oh Dead. no, <laughs> this <laughs> looks shit. Spielberg <laughs> went, boo! Yeah. But Hats. like, I understand where he's coming from. Like, Phil Tippett's work on like Star Wars and stuff, it lends a real solid yeah. realism to things. Of course, yeah. But then like, just... If you're, pure, it, it, it's such a specific vision for this movie because you need them to look real. You, you can't have them look animated. That's the whole point. It falls apart mm. if they're not a visual spectacle. Yeah. Um, and then like apparently there's this there's this story where there's like two CG artists that were there to like fill out background work and like come up with real simple background stuff. Mm. Who were basically like, Kathleen Kennedy, check this out. And then Kathleen Kennedy was like, do this. This is so much. Do this, please. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy. I thought she was too busy hating Star Wars. No, Nathan. No, don't be I, silly. That's outrageous. <laughs> oh man, you're People's telling me public... Kathleen Kennedy had a career before Star Wars? Before no. she destroyed Star Wars? <laughs> I don't believe it. She's always been busy plotting or actively <laughs> pursuing the downfall of Star Wars. That's that's where I know her from, and nowhere yeah. else. So listen, she hasn't turned Star Wars into a billion dollar fucking industry in itself. No. She ruined it. Yeah, she ruined it. <laughs> oh god, this is satire. <laughs> yeah, people's misconception of what <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy does. What yeah. her job description is and her career before Star Wars is hilarious to me. Her lifelong, very like, uh, very well praised career for yeah. like years and years and years. Before One of the she... best producers to ever work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Before she was, before George Lucas personally recommended her to take over Lucasfilm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and the people are like, 
Why can't they make cool movies like the old Indiana Jones movies? Oh, the ones that Kathleen Kennedy produced. Yeah. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh, uh, dear God. People's selective memory is genuinely baffling on the internet sometimes. It is. Yeah, it's quite funny. Um, all right. Should we, do you want to get into some little things? Do you want to talk about dinosaurs? What do you want to do? I want you to talk about dinosaurs. What's your favorite dinosaur? Uh, it might be boring, but it's the T-Rex. <laughs> We've already done the T-Rex. Actually, no. Fuck you. It's not my favorite dinosaur, but it's an amazing scene. All right. The rap the raptor kitchen scene. The raptor kitchen scene is good. Yeah. Oh, so very good. tense. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Also one of the finest cuts ever. Unless they've learned to open doors. Cut to a raptor just opening a door with ease. Yeah. <laughs> that moment where one just like jumps up onto like the kitchen counter. So oh. good. Yeah. And it it go. changes the game, right? We've we've played like action adventure stealth games before. Right, mm. the rules are: if you crouch behind anything, even if you're not covered, you're fine. Yeah. yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. But then the raptor jumps up on the counter. I'm like, no, oh, that's no. not fair. <laughs> its field of view has increased. <laughs> yeah, it's it. I tell you what it is. You know, you know the the boss battle of David in The Last of Us Part One. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like Where that. Where are you, like Ellie? You, yeah, and you I stab know him you're once. Here, Ellie. Yeah, exactly. And you, you, you stab him with a plate once, and then he starts going faster, and you're like, this wasn't fair. This isn't established. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, a brilliant scene, which also prompted my mini segment that I wanted to briefly bring up, um, which is called No One Frames a Shot Like Steven Spielberg. <laughs> oh, no, here we go. All right. There's only three. I've been... I, got, I, I, I really... only three. I, I re thought I was going to have one. I really limited myself. Well, I let you. Uh, you let me gush about dinosaurs. I guess I'll fucking thank you. Let you gush about your silly little. <laughs> I have so many little filmmaking notes. I'm like, I'll breeze over them today. You all had Oppenheimer last week. I'll calm down for a bit. <laughs> um, right. Firstly, the first one's fun. Right, is Alan being hounded by two kids. It's when they all get into the weird like on rails cars. Yes, and like the which little boys, not like on rails as well. Yeah, just, no, it's not. <laughs> just cars which just drive over the rails very clearly. <laughs> and I, at one point, I was looking to see if Spielberg had bothered to line up the center of the car with the rail. No, not and, even but the centered. camera's panning, so you can't tell. <laughs> oh no, you can at one point. They're very clearly not centered oh, at really? one point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Oh, it leads me to my, another favourite car moment is that Jeff Goldblum taps on the monitor and he's like, are there going to be uh, dinosaurs in your dinosaur tour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, right. First shot in No One Frames a Shot Like Steven Spielberg um, is Alan Grant is being hounded by this little boy just chasing him in and out of cars um, and like literally follows him for like a good minute and like Alan Grant is in between a car, shuts the door on the kid. He's like, finally, you think the shot's going to end? Alan Grant turns around, jump scare with a little girl. And he's like, I am never escaping these kids. Great shot, right? No, I'm sorry. You're giving me a look, but it's a great <laughs> shot. And le lesser directors would not have put this effort in. Okay. Because <laughs> they, they're moving camera rigs through a car. That's not easy for a quick dialogue exchange, but it sells the joke and I'm all for it. Nathan, this, no one frames a... a shot like Steven <laughs> Okay. Hey. <laughs> I don't disagree. <laughs> okay. Can I do number two? Or do yes, you have a yes, please. Okay. Please move on. Uh, Sam Jackson arm thing. Um, yeah. So the, the, the a raptor is smashing up against Laura Dern. She shut the door. Then she falls back into a machine. Sam Jackson's arm wraps around her. It's all safe. Huzzah. Sam Jackson's arm is concealed by a shadow. She's like... It's Sam Jackson, thank God. And then his just severed arm falls off into her hands. Yeah. An another left to right pan, incredible. Great little reveal of information. Nathan, no one frames a shot like Steven Spielberg. Okay, great. <laughs> and my last one. You know okay. this one. Could you hazard a guess as to what it is? Um, It's the best shot in the movie. Dinosaur? T-Rex? Yeah. No, well, oh, maybe it's not the best shot in the movie then. Okay. Well. It's in the kitchen scene. It's not the best shot in the movie, then. Uh, I, guess, I guess not. It's the uh, it's the raptor running at the um, the girl who's like in like some sort of dumb waiter, and you think it's just crashed into her, but she was in the reflection the whole time. Very clever, yeah. So clever. I don't even know how they did it. Yeah. Like considering the only way you can think of to do it, there'd be a camera in frame the entire time. I'm surprised one of your best shots 
or whatever this this fucking segment was was no one frames a shot like Steven Spielberg. All right, great. Wasn't the one of like the raptor <clears throat> when it's like got the like the the reflection of like the computer code all over it and stuff. I like the shot, but I'm I'm more specifically thinking about like movement in the shot. I'm like like how the camera whips one side does something interesting. Sometimes it's exhausting being your friend. No, because there's framing up a shot like a composition, but then there's also an actual framing of a shot where the camera moves around, and it's it's a different thing. Okay. <laughs> Nathan, no one frames a shot like okay. Steven Spielberg. I get it. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do dinos? Do you want to do little things? Where you want to go with this? Because we can start wrapping up. I'm I'm gonna get exhausted from screaming about Steven Wrapped Spielberg. Wrapping up. Oh, he did it. Very good. Um. Do I have anything else to say? Dinosaurs are cool. Love dinosaurs. Some great dinosaur moments. Um, what a great big pile of shit. That's cool. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, bit of fun. Very um, quotable. Laura Dern just getting straight into that poo. Wasting no time. <laughs> Good <laughs> yeah. on her. That, again, another fucking great, like, practical dinosaur. That, like, stegosaurus that's kind of sickly oh, and stuff. Yeah. Great stuff. You can actually, um, that's the, how impressive is that that you can actually see it look ill? Yeah. Like, it doesn't just look like a, a, a flopped over, <laughs> like, yeah. like prosthetic or something. It looks like a real creature that's in pain, yeah. There is a moment in Jurassic World where they, like, do something similar with, like, a, a an actual puppet and stuff. I'm like, oh, here's a dinosaur that's sick. It's, it's fell over and stuff. But somehow it's not the same. Somehow from, like, mm. 1993 to 2015, <laughs> like, it looks worse somehow. But is it? Is there like a tangibility in 1993 that like, because like there's pictures of Steven Spielberg like sat having his lunch next to this dinosaur on the floor like it's mm. it's all there. Yeah. So maybe maybe that. I, don't, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen Jurassic World in a long while, so I, I couldn't really speak on it. It's a great movie. I'm excited to get back to it. To be fair, I love dinosaurs. <laughs> I can um, uh, a great poet once said. Ask anybody what's your favorite Sam Jackson part. No one's going to say what's his name from Jurassic Park. That's true. It is true. <laughs> Nathan, the scripts that I write aren't the <laughs> cleanest. <laughs> but when I grip Mike's, I'm the <laughs> <laughs> Quentin anyway. Tarantino is yeah. a genius. Fuck! I believe it was Tarantino who said that. Mm. I might be wrong. The real one. Or, yeah. at very least, one of the best impressions of Tarantino I've ever seen. <laughs> sure. It's great. Come on. <laughs> sure. If, if, look, if you have no idea, it's epic rap battles of history. Nathan and I have a weird knowledge of it. <laughs> we did. Just one of the things that we share. We both just were on. We were online at the right time. And it's more <laughs> embarrassing for Nathan because he's older than me. <laughs> I, I'm like fucking high. <laughs> I'm not that much older than you. Right? I'm 30. You're 27. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's because we're in the off section. Normally, you're four years older than me. <laughs> but no, normally I'm three. <laughs> the off section is when I'm four years old. You're all about these loopholes, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Stop this. Um, we've gone like over an hour without mentioning Jeff Goldblum's laugh yet. <laughs> what's, what's his laugh? It's the, the, you know, in the helicopter, he's like... <laughs> sounds like Wario. Or no, no it, sound, it sounds like Squidward. <laughs> sounds like a Minecraft villager. <laughs> A chorus of Minecraft villagers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, also, mm. one thing that I thought was quite amusing just for this podcast's sake um, mm. is that Nedry has a photo tape to his monitor of J. Robert Oppenheimer. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so so, so Oppenheimer, night. last week's episode is part of the series, I'm calling it. <laughs> I saw this last night. I was like, why the fuck is that there? Why has he got a photo of Oppenheimer on his It doesn't even make TV? sense. It doesn't. Why is Nedry weirdly obsessed with Oppenheimer? He's just like <laughs> you for real, man. You and Nedry, two peas in a pod. Yeah. Oh, man. It's true. Uh, that was my last little little thing. Uh, anything else? So we can do some recommendations. No, I love dinosaurs. I too love dinosaurs. And I'm quite scared about next week. Because I don't remember if it. I like The Lost World that much. Get over it. Okay, I will. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. 
Uh, Nathan, it is the time of the show where we recommend some stuff to each other. Um, oh, I forgot. <laughs> well, I can go first anyway. It's fine. All right, great. Um, what we do at this point in the show is we recommend something to each other and to our lovely, loyal listeners. It could be something we've watched, read, listened to, experienced. Basically, just anything that we've done uh, in the past week that we'd love to share with you. Nathan, would you like to go first? What the fuck are you doing? You just I'm always said... doing. I always do that thing. I know, but come on. Last couple of episodes, I've been doing this little joke where I throw it to you and you throw it back, and I know it's going to happen. No, Lawrence, I would not like to go first. Would you? Badum tis, everyone. <laughs> Great. Nathan, I'm recommending Poor Things, the movie uh, starring Emma Stone, Mark What's Ruffalo, this? Willem Dafoe. Never heard of this. You have heard of this. We had a conversation about it the other day. Okay. I feel like you must know. Are you being polite for the podcast? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> It came out on streaming this week. Uh, use this time to think, Nathan. Think about your recommendation. All right. um, it came out on streaming this week. Uh, I think it's a great movie. I think it's there's this kind of behind, not behind. There's this kind of like messaging of empowerment. It's got some great comedy. Mark Ruffalo is like, he, like and, and Emma Stone. They're, they're a pairing that are like they have some of the best comedic bits I've seen in a film in a while. Um, yeah, and it's all I don't know this crazy art style when it's all wrapped up in this weird um little bow of yorgos lanthimos's brain uh, which is a I, I would imagine a scary place to live um but it's a good movie and it's finally out on streaming so if you haven't been able to catch it it is a good time and it's not very long either so you can have a have a breezy time with it i won't <laughs> okay fine nathan what are you recommending please maybe i'll go watch dune 2 Oh, I, I had tickets to see that today, but I had to re reschedule. I'm now not seeing it until the end of the week, which I'm upset about. Do you maybe want to explain how you're not just throwing money away there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've said this before. I, I have the unlimited thing, so I, okay. I can just cancel a ticket and lose no money. It's fine. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, have you seen Doom 1? No. Um, <laughs> you have a weird I'm... time with Doom 2. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just wait until like they're both out and then I'll just watch them back to back and I'll be like, yeah, that was fine. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then you're like, no, nope, won't talk about that again. <laughs> Never again. Um, I, wait, what were we doing? What was I saying? Nathan, you got to recommend something to people. Yeah, I know, but before that. I don't know, that was in your head. I'll tell you what, I've not finished this yet, um, but I'm I'm currently watching the um, the Netflix's adaptation of Avatar: The Last Airbender. I'm halfway through it. I'm four episodes into it. Um, I think it's good. I think it's quite good so far. It's getting quite a bad rap, um, and undeservedly so. I think. I think people are like, well, it's not the exact. It's not the exact same as the version I liked as a kid, <laughs> so it's bad. And I'm like, go watch and, that one. And yeah, go watch that one. And. <laughs> It's not as good as that one. I will mm. fully admit that, as I love Avatar: uh, The Last Airbender. It's a genuinely a phenomenal show, um, really well written, absolutely great characters. is is one of the all time best uh, shows that have been created, um, and 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 this is this is good. I think it's a um, uh, a fine adaptation, quite a good adaptation, if I'm being honest. It, it genuinely is. It, um really quite good of, of what i've seen so far again i'm halfway through around four episodes into it the little kid who plays ang is is great i think um zuko is is phenomenal zuko's one of my favorite characters ever danny um, zuko is that right no prince zuko oh i see prince danny zuko <laughs> danny zuko's from greece <laughs> <laughs> this avatar is automatic <laughs> no. it's hydromatic no Prince. Come on, Ang. You don't want to be a beauty school dropout. I don't Stop know. this. I haven't seen Grease in a while. <laughs> Stop this now. Um, yeah, it's good. I'm enjoying it. One of the best Glee covers, beauty school dropout. <sighs> Glad we're focusing on that part of the <laughs> recommendation. I no, I don't know the first thing about Avatar The Last Airbender other than... Because uh, you refuse to watch anything that you don't already know. Ben, ben has been hounding me to watch it. So he, have I. <laughs> And if you watch it now because fucking Ben says so, <laughs> I swear to fucking no, God. You two, I, you two can argue about this. I've got a few things in the watch list first. I, who knows if I'll ever no get around to it. No one cares about your shit watch list, all right? <laughs> got to watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I need to watch that show. That Why came do out. you? Because it looks cool. 
So does Avatar. <laughs> I know, but I don't know anything about Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just say? We can't have this round, Aiden. Why does you're anyone watch anything? <laughs> you're scared to watch anything new. It's That's not true. Animated. I watch plenty of new things. No, it's because it's animated. And you no, have I the like animated bias. stuff. Do you, what, was the, what animated stuff do you enjoy watching? I watched Monsters, Inc. not just some days ago. You did? Well done. What else? Thank you. Um, what else was I saying? Mm, Marcel the Shell is somewhat animated. We're going to be talking about that soon. That's going to be fun. <laughs> I don't think we are. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Why? We've already talked about that. We're oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, we did, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, strike that from the record. Um, I don't know, some other stuff. Shut up. Yo, yo, you don't watch anything animated unless I make you for this podcast. All right? <laughs> Shut up. That's Hang on. No, I'm proving you wrong. That's not true. I'm sure it's not. Okay. Hang on. You might watch the occasional movie, but... That's watching stuff. No. You don't watch a TV show. You're like, I watched all of Rebels. I know you forced me to. Yeah, yes. What did I just say, Lawrence? <laughs> That's not fair. You can't, you can't make this point. It's nasty. It's true. It's true. No. Yep. I watched Rise of the Guardians a while ago and Princess and the Frog. Great. They're good movies. Um, what else have I seen recently? I say a while ago. That was like a couple of weeks ago. Um, I don't know. Some other stuff, presumably. Why don't, why don't you shut up? I won't. Ratatouille, Monsters, Inc. All things I've done this year as part of my watching a movie every day of the year challenge. Thank you very, very much for listening, everyone. Um... If you have enjoyed the show, then please feel free to leave us a five-star review. It would be very much appreciated. You can do that on your podcast platform of choice, uh, especially Apple, because you can write a little message as well, which would be very, very nice to see. Uh, next week, we are going to be doing this. Hold on to your butts. And now it's only a matter of time before this lost world is found and pillaged. Hold on to your butts, too. It's not Mario, Nathan. Wahoo. Um... It's actually The Lost World. Will we find it? Who knows? Um, you can follow us on Twitter. We are at Another Happy Pod. That's where you'll get post reminders for new episodes that go up every single Friday at 10 a.m. Side, also... side note, side note. I've decided, yep. and I haven't just decided this. I decided this a long time ago, but I fucking hate the way you describe our Twitter. Um, <laughs> what? Because you sell it on the fact that you can get a post reminder, and that's yeah. just the most boring thing in existence, okay? <laughs> it's like, oh, you can be more reminded when the episode <laughs> comes out. Great. Right? It's just a little bonus. We don't no. tweet from this one. Yeah, but they don't need to know that, all right? <laughs> all right, go you and know, follow us for yeah. absolutely no No, tweets. no, no. Just, say, just follow us on Twitter to stay, you know, stay up to date and join in on the conversation. I say it because it's a good little segue. But, it's, then but say, it sounds so fucking dull. You must right. understand that. Can you please change it? To all right, fine. Follow us on Twitter to keep up to date with any updates or so right. stay involved in the conversation or something. I'll change it, but I'm keeping this now. So the people so know. Oh. <laughs> I'll find, do what you want, I guess. <laughs> From next week, I promise it will be different. Yeah. Um, it is also a place, Nathan, our Twitter. It's a very exciting place where we definitely tweet from. Uh, but it's also, also a place. <laughs> and also. <laughs> oh, right. no! That, that is. That's kind of largely your fault that <laughs> there's no fun conversations happening on there because. Because we've got no fans. No it's, fans it's, come it's here. It's not the same on Still Got Legs, is it? It's very easy to have one conversation every week rather than being like, please come back and talk about this movie. <laughs> Please, every week is a different thing. It's because you, it's because you never tweet anything fun out there. I'm always tweeting fun little memes and stuff. I'm saving all my fun stuff for my Twitter. That's where I get my traction, Nathan. It's where I blow up for making fun of Fast and Furious. Great, thanks. Uh, look, you can also suggest topics on our Twitter if you follow the link in our pin tweet. No promises, but we have already had a few ones this year. Uh, we've had fun with watching the thing and also Saltburn. Um, we currently have a busy schedule, but you know we we can make exceptions here and there. Nathan, uh, we have another podcast as well, don't we? We do, and they have great conversations on Twitter. Um, <laughs> it's called Still Got Legs. It's our Doctor Who rewatch podcast, where every week we watch and discuss an episode of Doctor Who. We just started Series Five, so we're getting into the Moffat and Matt Smith era of the show. It's a good fun time to get on board, uh, and we're having a lot of fun with it. We also have a Discord server, which you can join. Link will be down below in the show notes or the description if you're watching and listening on YouTube, which you probably aren't. Well, no, but you can do. YouTube is up and running now, courtesy of uh, Nathan Bauer himself, Nathan James. 
Um, so go over there if you fancy, I don't know, commenting, giving us more direct feedback, I guess, than on this. No, there'll, uh, be bo- there'll be bonus stuff up there. There will be bonus stuff up there. Uh, speaking of, summing up, no, we'll save that for the next show. <laughs> We've still got legs. I was going to do, do the, the video, but it's not Yeah, you can here. say it. Yeah, there's a bonus oh, thing up now. There will be a bonus thing coming up this week. Uh, no, it'll be already be up. Yes, the week just gone. No, yeah. the day just gone. The day just this gone. This comes out Friday. Go. It came out on Wednesday. I'll tell you what, go to the channel. It'll be there. All right? Okay, great. <laughs> it's the simplest way to get this done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Thank you for listening, everyone. We will see you all next week for a fun Jurassic time in Jurassic March. Um, yeah, goodbye, I guess. Anything else? I love dinosaurs. And he you. loves dinosaurs. Yeah, and I'll never apologize for that. No one wants you to. It's a good thing to you love. You do. I don't. You you always try to destroy my love for dinosaurs. Only when you destroy my love for Steven Spielberg. <laughs> this should be a match made in heaven, this series. Okay, let's move on. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.